Hi, my name's Tim. In this AMX Tech Bytes video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Muse controllers. To begin, we'll take a closer look at each of the different products. There are four products offered, and they all feature identical specs on the processor and memory. The only difference between products is the number of control ports integrated into the hardware. Starting with the largest unit, the MU3300 offers eight serial ports, eight relays, eight IR, and eight IO ports. Next, we have the MU2300, which offers four serial, four relays, four IR, and four IO ports. Both of these units are full rack width and are one RU. The MU1300 is a compact device that requires a one-third width rack space and includes two serial ports, two IR, and four I.O. ports. And last but not least, the MU1000 is a brand new form factor that includes the processor, but does not include any local control ports. A major advantage of this device is that it's a PoE device and can be DIN rail mounted with an optional accessory kit. This processor is ideal if you're only planning to control network-based devices. Should you require local control ports, you can always add our Universal Control Extenders, or CE boxes. The MU3300, 2300, and 1000 also offer an ICS LAN port, should you require a separate, completely isolated network for all your connected AV devices. Let's dive deeper. I'm going to connect to the web interface of an MU2300. I'll open up my browser and enter the IP address of the controller, 192.168.6.164. In case you're wondering, the Muse controllers are set to DHCP by default. The default username is admin, and the default password is password, all lowercase. Immediately, you're presented with a screen to change your password. I'm going to type in the old password, and then I'll choose a more robust password to keep this device secure. I'll now have to log in with the new password I just created. The pop-up on the screen will show you a brief login history to see if there's been any unsuccessful login attempts. Hit Accept. With the Muse Automation Platform, this web interface takes on a significant role in building out your system. Whether you decide to program your system with a high-code solution using Python, Groovy, or JavaScript, or if you decide to use our no-code, low-code solution, Node-RED, your journey will always begin here. I'll quickly provide an overview of each menu item. This home menu provides you with a dashboard of your controller to quickly see IP info, firmware version, model info, etc. The next menu is the Network tab. This is where you can manage the IP settings of your controller, both IPv4 or IPv6. The date and time page is next. Here, you can set up an NTP server connection. This is important in case your programs use any time-based events, you'll want them to execute at the appropriate time. 802.1x security is available if you're installing this controller into a secure installation, at which point, the IT administrator will provide the appropriate credentials or certificates to authenticate this controller on the network. The ICS LAN page now provides much greater flexibility than our previous generation controllers. You're now able to define the network size and addressing. The next tab is the security tab, in which you're able to set up various users and roles for different individuals accessing this controller. In addition, you can turn on and off various ports to further secure the Muse controller. The System tab is next, and the first item in the list is the Devices page. This is where you'll spend most of your time as you begin connecting devices to your system. Please make sure to watch our other videos which specifically focus on adding devices. The Drivers page shows which drivers are currently installed and their version information. This is mainly for information purposes only. The Extensions page is where we'll go to install or uninstall the various processing engines inside the Muse controller. Take note that Groovy, JavaScript, and Python are running by default, but HiQnet, Duet, and Node-RED are not yet installed. We'll learn more about these extensions in other video tutorials. 
Repositories is a location on the Muse controller where you'll be able to link resources that will be utilized in your programming environment. The firmware page is where you'll go to upgrade the firmware. Additionally, you can reset your controller to the factory firmware image, or the configuration reset button will reset your box to defaults, but it will retain the currently loaded firmware image. The last page in the system menu is the programs page. Here, you will find a list of all the programs that will eventually be running on your Muse controller after programming. Next up is the Plugins tab. The list of plugins will dynamically grow based on which extensions you have installed. Let's take a quick look at each of these extensions. The ICSP plugin contains the settings needed to configure legacy AMX hardware devices that communicate over the ICSP protocol. You can enable encryption if that is required, and you're able to see a list of devices using the Network Discovery Protocol, or NDP. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, is used for sending and receiving email messages over the internet. You'll set up the server settings on this page. iDevice is referring to the physical control ports on the MU controller, such as the RS-232, IO, or IR ports. Here, you will manage all of the IR files you intend to use in the controller. Simply upload your IR files directly into the controller. Once uploaded, you then have the ability to assign any IR file directly onto a specific port. I'm connected to an MU2300, therefore I have four IR ports available. Select the file you wish to use in the drop-down menu and click Install. The file is now loaded into IR port number one. The final tab we'll look at is the Diagnostics tab. The first page is the Logs page, where you'll be able to view the live logs coming from the controller. The Shell page opens up a live SSH connection directly to the Muse controller. Last but not least, I want to point out on the top right of the menu bar, there's a conveniently located reboot button if you ever need to reboot your controller. Be sure to watch our other TechBytes videos as you further learn how to unlock the massive potential of AMX's Muse automation platform. Thanks for watching.